Narrative video games in general only really have a few things to entertain the player with, since it's basically just a high-budget choose-your-own-adventure book. You have your visuals, and your story, and your, your, your choices, I guess, and that's basically it. I'm not trying to talk down to narrative video games in general as a genre. There are many good games in this genre. Telltale's The Walking Dead has made plenty of people break down into tears. I'm just saying that thanks to the fact that this genre requires not too much coding and game design skills, this entire ecosystem of video games is subjected to the unintentional defamation of many, many indie game studios who are just getting started and or are just not very good at what they do. This game, Goodbye Volcano High, is just another spoke in the wheel in that dilemma. I don't really think I even need to tell you that all of these characters are butt ugly, so instead I'll just explain how and why that hinders this game so terribly. Let's get started. The game starts up with our resident female protag Fang, in all of her Tumblr-esque glory. Right off the bat, you have many different opportunities to look at our protag from multiple different angles, and the most polite way to describe the way this character is designed has to be the result of an artist who is still trying to figure things out. And the least polite way to describe it is a grown adult who hasn't mentally matured out of their high school phase drawing angst-infused bile. Seriously, look at this, man. Look at this character. Okay, so she's got wings, right? But, but then she's also got feathery arms? A and she's still got the stupid pointy thing on the back of her head because she's a pterosaur or whatever? And then, worse on top of all of that, she is sky blue like a freaking dolphin? Like, like, what am I looking at here? All of the characters in this garbage share the exact same confusing designs. L here, let me talk about Fang's stupid cohorts. This is Trish. She's supposed to be a fucking Triceratops, uh, obviously because of her name, but she's also like pastel colored purple. She has a friggin' LA dyke lesbian haircut, and as for the cherry on top, she's supposed to be all bubbly in her personality, but her lips never match her voice acting, which is actually a problem with every character in this game. Yeah, obnoxiously saturated soft shading doesn't exactly meld well with literal effing dinosaurs. It's just such a disjointed combo of elements, making dinosaurs, the things that are constantly being depicted as strong and tough and brutish, to be so friggin' lame and attemptedly DeviantArt 2003 kawaii. As the story progresses, Fang goes to a few different places, and said places are filled with a large amount of extra background characters to make the world that is this animated fever dream feel more alive. And these extra characters all share share the exact same fundamental awkwardness in design that's just really hard to look at. No matter what the age or gender of any character in this game is, damn near everybody has the exact same body type. And the way the dinosaur head is like three times bigger than their freaking neck just makes it look all the more uncanny. There are actually plenty of other video games out there where character designs are using huge heads that are bigger than their body, but that's because those characters in question have appropriately cartoonish looking bodies that match the entire character, you know, like Sonic. But in this, it's just an attemptedly human-looking body with a dinosaur head attached to it. And the super thin neck that almost every character has just makes it even worse to look at. My understanding is that the reason why they did this is because they're supposed to be... <laughs> non-binary dinosaurs, according to various press materials, but A, that's fucking stupid, and B, that's no excuse for how legit creepy some of these characters look. Like, look at this character here. This is Naomi. Look at her! Look at how fucking weird she looks, dude! Her mouth is basically detached from the body. You know, like one of those robot chicken sketches? Like, like, seriously, I'm trying to think of something else, like, analytical to say, but if I need, like, I don't think I need to say anything here. Like, if I need to explain to you what the fuck is wrong with this, then you need to get your eyes adjusted. Okay, so let's give up the only compliment I will ever give to this game aesthetically. The backgrounds. The environments and settings, they all look really, really good, actually. You can tell that they're painted digitally using an artist completely different from the person who's designing these characters. And honestly, these really good-looking, vibrant environments should be breathing life into the setting of this game. That is, if it wasn't being immediately tarnished by these hideous-ass mutant humans with dinosaur heads super glued to their necks. Oh yeah, and uh, since I'm here, let me quickly bring up the voice acting. It's all terrible. 
And the reason why isn't actually because the voice actors are all terrible. They're actually all doing their best. The issue is that they have no direction. You can tell, based off of the delivery of many of these characters' lines, that nobody has any idea how they should be delivering their dialogue. <laughs> no thanks. I quit. My voice. Anyway, the bad news. About the giant rock that's gonna kill us all? Yeah. We heard. It really seems like they were just told to read out the lines and wing it, and they were given no direction on how they should deliver these lines. So, yeah, no disrespect to any voice actor involved in this. Well, except for Fang. Fang's voice actress is probably the worst I've ever heard since High Guardian Spice. I want to get into the animation, and I actually wrote, like, an entire two-paragraph segment to discuss it, but I actually deleted it because... Does it even matter? Who cares if the game's animations are done well or not, which by the way they're not, when the foundation, which is the art style and character design of this work, are so wrong and gross on a basic level. Like the way these characters' mouths are moving, and they never match the characters' lines ever, and then there's the game bugs. There's so many goddamn game bugs. Seriously, this game was in development hell for three friggin' years, and it's a glorified visual novel. How is it this buggy? I also wanted to spend some time talking about these terrible hipster indie rock music segments that you're forced to tolerate to get through this slog of a story. Well, okay, maybe that's a little bit too harsh. I don't hate the songs in this game. But look, my point is, there's a few minor tidbits I want to add into this script to discuss the quality, but I'm not gonna bother branching out and discussing the extra stuff if the tree is rotten at its roots. This game is physically wincing to look at. End of story. Now that we've established that the animation is scuffed beyond belief, the voice acting is all over the place and the artwork is physically painful to look at, I want to round this all up by looking at a different game. Let's briefly talk about Night in the Woods. I don't like Night in the Woods. I really don't. I don't like the obnoxiously sarcastic and quirky for quirky sake humor. I don't like the story in general. But at the end of the day, Night in the Woods is still a video game that does a lot of things right. Too many things, actually. Regardless of my dislike, I can easily admit that the graphics and art style are very, very good. To be specific, they're very... Uh, compact. Characters' bodies and head shapes are very simplistic to the point of a children's storybook, and that's a good thing, because that makes all all these characters easier to organically fit inside the setting of this game in terms of animation and aesthetic. Furthermore, Night in the Woods has zero voice acting, which is great in comparison to tolerating Fang's terrible freaking voice. And one more thing, good freaking god is this art style so damn pretty to look at in this game. It's a beautiful combination of melancholy autumn, which of course is the perfect backdrop for this very soul-crushing and depressing plot that is in this title. A again, Again, you compare that to the artistic tonal whiplash of Goodbye Volcano High, a story about literal impending meteor death, and the art style is a vibrant, pastel-colored nightmare, and... Yeah, when you inspect Night in the Woods, and then you compare its pros to GVH's cons, it just makes the simple fact that this game was made by people who have no idea what they're doing even more apparent. Night in the Woods aesthetic is fantastic, because it was created by people who have optimized their art style for this video game. And if you want to be a successful artist in any super specific industry, you need to optimize your style. That's why this game is just so naturally successful in the graphics department. Uh, boys, I want to make the statement that is, despite all my ranting on this video, I'm actually not a graphics nut when it comes to video games. I personally don't care if the graphics are bad as long as the game still plays good. But here's the deal. This game, and moreover this entire genre, is very dependent on good graphics, or in this case a good aesthetic. Horror games and narrative games are both very important and very dependent on having a tasteful aesthetic. Graphics for horror games don't need to look perfect and realistic, but they do always need to look atmospheric and organic. If you were playing Dead Space and you saw that the game was constantly screen tearing and blocky ass textures were everywhere, it, it wouldn't be a very scary atmosphere, would it? And narrative type video games are somewhat similar in the necessity of a good atmosphere. With a visual novel, graphics are very important because you want your players to keep their eyes on what's on screen. You want them to be 
pleased when you look at your cast of characters. 90% of visual novels on Steam feature cute and or sexy anime girls with animal ears and shit, and I understand that many people find that to be completely cringe and everything, but you gotta understand, the reason why these creators do that is because they know that their viewers want something satisfying to keep their eyes on as they're navigating your story. And yeah, after everything I've ranted about, I, I don't think I need to reiterate the fact that this game is genuinely, legitimately hard to look at. I mean, I mean, hell, it's even hard to listen to sometimes. This is why graphics and narrative games are important. The primary issue with Goodbye Volcano High in terms of the way it looks is actually not just because of the fact that it looks like shit. It's because it looks like shit, and also, this game really, really wants you to take its themes seriously. It really does. When you find out that the world of ugly-ass rejected Tumblr OCs is about to end because of a stupid meteor, you're supposed to take that seriously. When you see that Fang's stupid friends are going through their own idiotic dilemmas, you're supposed to take that seriously. When you witness Fang go through the motions of the most trite, stock factory model high school rock band storyline you've seen at least a thousand times in any other high school movie, you are supposed to take it seriously. But how can I, or anyone, over the age of 14 ingest this video game story with any form of seriousness when it looks like this, when it plays like this, when it sounds like this. This is why the aesthetic of a visual novel is extremely important. If you tell me that you're trying to make a serious story about the importance of high school life before time runs out, and you tell me that your main character looks like this, I'm not gonna take your scenario seriously. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna laugh my ass off at you. Now that we covered one of the two only things that make your narrative video game enjoyable, let's cover the second one. How's the narrative, the plot points, important decisions and choices to make, and what are your results and the consequences for making them? Well, we're going to get into that next video, but spoiler alert, it's also terrible for its own completely unique reasons. To be continued in part three. It's time for the Patreon roll call. My $10 supporters are Art Blocked, Cami Bees, Jack G, Joseph Vincent, Klutzy Ninja Kitty, May Kaji, Procrastinator Dave, Skyer, Sindrid7, and Stormy Knight. And let's not forget our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as our $10 Patreons. If you'd like to be in the credits of my videos as well, just catch me on Patreon.com slash BlacklightJack. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.